What is going on everyone? Today I have a very exciting video for you guys. So my channel obviously is about pharmacy informatics or a lot of it is, um, but more so than that, I get a lot of questions about consulting in pharmacy informatics. And today I'm very excited because I'll be sharing an interview, a very informative interview with one of my colleagues and he's gonna shed some light on that. All right, let's get right to it. So let's start with the basics. Uh, why, don't, why don't you tell us a little bit about your educational background, you know, when, where you went to school, what you studied. All right, so I graduated undergrad from St. Olaf College, which is a liberal arts college in Northfield, Minnesota. That was in 2011. I was a political science major, interested in international relations, um, political theory, and I kind of thought I'm probably going to become a lawyer, I'm going to work for an NGO. I was pretty involved even as a youth in, in politics, elections. I did a lot of you know, work volunteering for, for different candidates in my home state of Wisconsin and nationally. So that was why I decided to do a political science major at, at St. Olaf. And I guess coming out of school, I, I thought I was going to be, again, a lawyer, <laughs> work for an NGO. That's where I applied. Mm -hmm. But eventually, I did apply to Epic um, near the end of my senior year, and they hired me for that summer. So I started working at Epic right after I graduated from school. And I spent two years there on the Willow Inpatient team implementation. And I, you know, I liked it at Epic a lot. I enjoyed my job, I enjoyed the travel. Um, I actually enjoyed the travel a little too much because I decided <laughs> after about exactly two years to quit and I spent a good year just traveling uh, in the US and around the world and my my motivation for that was that's really what I like about life I, I, I've always enjoyed traveling from from the time I was a kid I had a lot of opportunities but you know at age 24 or 25 I realized I had either been in school or working for my entire life and I wanted just a break so I took it okay so the, the, the background is a little interesting. How, how did you even think about Epic? Like how did that even come up? So that's an interesting question. I was you know applying for jobs and not really sure what I wanted to do exactly. And it wasn't until my mom, who uh, was a family physician, now retired, who had been a physician champion on an Epic implementation at her hospital in the early 2000s. So, I was probably having dinner or on the phone with her, and she was talking to me about, you know, what do you think you're going to do once you graduate? And I said, well, I've, you know, applied to some NGOs. I got this job. I remember, I got a job offer from I forget what the the, the company was, but it's basically to go out to Berkeley, California, and canvas for different social causes. And, and you know, at the time, I thought that would be a cool thing to do. I yeah. love California, but. She reminded me that that probably wouldn't pay really well, and we went over what they had told me, which was essentially if you didn't get enough signatures for, for these causes, you would be fired pretty much immediately. And I looked into that and thought, well, that's probably a bad idea. <laughs> so my mom, this family physician, said, you know, I've gone down to Epic a lot, and I've gone to UGM, I've worked with a lot of the employees there, they all seem pretty happy, they all seem to like what they're doing, so maybe you should try applying there. And my mom's pretty smart, I trust her a lot, so I went with that, and yeah, sure enough, I applied, was invited down for you know, their, their kind of long, day-long interview process after a phone interview. Uh, that went well enough, and they hired me, so after I, after I graduated in early June, I started the day after July 4th in 2016. Wow, not bad. Very interesting story. Yeah, so my mom definitely was this catalyst that, that brought me to Epic, and I, without her recommendation, it probably would never have happened. Oh, that's cool. So, tell me about Willow Impatient, and the yeah. folks on the phone may, or the folks on the, on the net may not know what Willow Impatient is. Can you tell me, like, how you came about to that? Did you just get they, dropped? You know, Epic, I think, does a pretty good job with their interview process, and what, what we would always say on the Will Inpatient team, and I think other teams as well, is how you'd find people that were pretty similar to you, 
as, as far as like Willow IS, a lot of the guys on Willow IS that I became friends with played soccer. We actually were all on the epic, you know, intramural soccer team that played in the league in Madison. So it was weird. There were similarities that you'd find with people and yeah, I didn't choose. I remember they asked, are you more interested in patient care or the economic building side? And I definitely went with patient care. That was, that was my answer because as far as those two options, I think patient care is more interesting than just doing billing. So, you know, you show up day one and you don't know what team you're going to be on until you get to Epic on your first day and they, they sort you into your groups. So, uh, at first I was like, all right, pharmacy. I, I don't know much about this, but I'm willing to learn and you, you go through a pretty intensive training process. You go through all the classes and I mean, at this point, it's, it's the part of Epic that I understand the most, obviously. I do have certifications in Beacon, and I understand, obviously, ClinDoc orders other inpatient parts. But, um, yeah, Willow Inpatient, the, the process of that, working with pharmacists, I, I've enjoyed a lot. And, and people do say, out of all the different um, end users that you do work with, pharmacists tend to be kind of the most competent with computer systems already, and mm. that's definitely, I've found that to be true at most organizations I've worked at. That's a nice thing to say there. <laughs> Are you a Harry Potter fan by chance? Oh yeah. This kind of makes me think of the sorting hat. Uh, right. They, I wonder if they got it from that. They have some sort of, I'm not sure if it's just people talking through, all right, we interviewed Jordan, what team would he fit on? Well, he said he wanted to do patient care, let's go through those, and why would we stick him in Will inpatient? Well, he showed uh, a good understanding of this in his interview or testing. Mm -hmm. I actually, so I applied to be either IS or uh, a writer. So huh. an interesting thing Epic does for writers is they have you write a bunch of essays during your during your interview process. So maybe it's just something I wrote in there that they noticed. It's it's definitely not something they tell you, you know, this is why we put you on this team. Yeah. It just sort of happened that way. Okay. Well, very cool. That's a very interesting background. I'm glad we talked about that. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. So, you've been in the business since 2016 is when you said you graduated? No, I graduated in 2011. So you've been working with Epic since 2011? Or I worked right with now? Epic for two years, pretty much exactly two years, 2011 to 2013, July. And then with the non-compete, I took a year off. And, you know, at, at the point of a year, I started dabbling, looking for consulting or full-time positions. That was my plan from the beginning, was to take a year off, wait out the non-compete, and then try and find a position that worked for me. Um, so yeah, and that was in, that would have been the summer of 2014 I started looking and then I wasn't actually hired um, until 2015. That was my first position that I got post Epic for a company that was merging with another organization actually. They both were already live on Epic and I was brought in to essentially keep up this old system while they combined everything into this other system. So just essentially helping out everybody over here until it, it finally actually merged. So Okay. Yeah, that was that was my first job after Epic. So about three ish years now. Three to four years as a consultant. Well so two years at Epic. Mm -hmm. Twenty fifteen early is when I started doing consulting work. So we would put it at about, you know, three years and ten months at this point. Yeah. How many organizations have you worked with now? I have worked with um, three since since I since I started consulting. Okay. So these are like very common questions here that I'm about to ask. Kind of like a day in the life of Jordan over here. Right. <laughs> so what what is a typical day? For well. You? It, it certainly changes with the season of what's happening. So on the current project I'm on, there have been multiple go lives. Mm -hmm. There have been uh, certainly different phases of what we're working on. There's been, I mean, I came into the project with it already being started. So when I was brought in, my main 
source of work were, you know, a couple people who needed help on things that they were trying to complete before the first go live. So, for instance, I was tasked with going through order sets and just checking them out, seeing if there's typos in any of, of the orders, medications specifically. Mm -hmm. um, they had done a lot of the order set build prior to finishing up their orderables and dispensables. So um, I, I just kind of looked through all of them. That was, that was the initial uh, work I was tasked with. But since then, uh, since Go Lives, a lot of it has been ticket resolution for end users who report things. That's the majority of what I spend my time on now nowadays. Um, but certainly, I think my main role as a con as a consultant on the Will inpatient team, who is not a pharmacist, mm -hmm. which I think is different than you know most consultants you see in the Will inpatient world are either pharmacists who have worked you know at a hospital that that uses Epic and they decided I want to go into the more informatic side. For me, I just have a good understanding of, of Epic, Will Inpatient in particular, and how to, how to use all the tools within Epic as an analyst, uh, the proper ways, the fastest ways, basically getting things done right quickly. So a lot of the analysts on this team have reached out to me to help them with build, help them with fixes, basically anything under the sun. I've always turned myself on this project in particular as a handyman. People reach out to me for questions or help when they're stuck. No. And, and I can certainly attest to that. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> I personally asked for help myself. I remember early on you, you <laughs> yeah. asked me questions and sometimes I did not really know the answers, but I was definitely willing to, to look into things. Yeah. I knew how to search you know, Epic's databases of information to, to find answers for people. Absolutely, you were a good addition to the team. So, you know, with that said, obviously you talked about a lot of things that you do, a lot of variety of things. What are the things you like the most and what are the things you like the least? So I think from my time at Epic all the way up until now, the most interesting thing about Willow Inpatient is you'll, you'll receive an issue. Someone's experiencing something, they don't know why it's happening, and there's a lot of places for you to look. You kind of have to figure what might be the root cause. You go and you test if that is the root cause. Maybe it's not at first and you need to do something else. So I think the logic aspect of, of trying to pinpoint where an issue is, is, that's the most fun, finding out what that thing is, fixing it. Uh, and letting somebody know that you know their workflow or this order that they're trying to place is now going to work properly for them can be a pretty enjoyable experience. Okay. So what about the uh, opposite of that? <laughs> well, it's kind of the other side of the same coin. You have an end user who reports something and you try and work with them to fix it and they aren't very responsive to you or things fall off and you can just become frustrated by the lack of Obviously, they want to fix, but they assume just giving you a little bit is going to help you solve it, but really you need to work with them more closely. So that can be a frustration that, that happens sometimes. But that's, you know, that's a minor uh, mm -hmm. portion of, of how it works. Usually people do want something to work, and they'll, they'll be ready to help you do that. Okay. And, and so for this next one is um, informatics in itself, especially with something like Epic. You know, there's a lot of version upgrades. and. Just new things that come out all the time, uh, right? whether it's yeah. in the software or maybe regulations like new meds and stuff like that. Um, do you often feel as though the questions that are thrown at you are things you already know or do you typically have to go and do a little searching to find the correct answer and things like that? As it's consultant? a bit of both. Okay. Some things will never change. I mean, an ERX record hasn't changed much from Epic 2010, which is what I was first certified on until now in 2018. Obviously, they add new items, mm -hmm. new features. Epic does a pretty great job of making sure you're up to date by requiring new version training. And you just kind of by, you know, from 2015, when I started doing consulting till now, I've had enough, you know, on the job experience of, of things as they change to, to keep up. But of course, you know, it's, it's always worthwhile to to be good at searching the user web because it's <laughs> yeah. it's a trove of information that you're not going to be able to keep in your your head all at once. So, yeah, sometimes I'll be going off and trying to to look at the guidebooks, the setup and support guides, 
uh, especially when I get a question from an analyst that I don't know the answer to. But as far as just working as a Willow inpatient analyst, I feel like I've got the, you know, the rote things down at this point. Seeing that with the two years at Epic and the almost four years of consulting, you know, six years experience on one portion of Epic, I've kind of, I don't know if that's 10,000 hours yet, but <laughs> it must be getting sure close. It's it must be getting thousand. close. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk uh, a little bit about the job market. Um, sure. This is always a hot topic. Yeah. Um, so, you know, in your job searches over the last couple organizations you've worked with, um, how have you just felt, you know, anecdotally? Have you felt as though there was a lot of jobs out there? A little? Like, what, what are your right. thoughts on that? So, like I said, coming into it, my non-compete ended about mid-2014, and that's when I started looking. Uh, a consulting agency did pick me up and you know they they promised a lot of things like we'll find you a job but six months went by and wasn't going anywhere and it just kind of happened out of the blue LinkedIn is a great resource there's clearly a lot of people agencies uh, recruiters looking for certain people to fill certain positions that they know about so Someone actually contacted me and she is now the person who's gotten me all three of my consulting gigs uh, post Epic. She is someone who is very connected and I feel really lucky that she met me or I met her. I, you know, you can't really say which it is because she, I think she reached out to me first, but a lot of people reach out to you. So the chance that it worked out with us, she was just a really nice person to meet and, and has helped me out a lot uh, as far as moving up and. Uh, the position I'm in now, I feel more, not, not so much comfortable. My first job, I felt comfortable as well, but this kind of fits the IS role that I was working at Epic more than the two gigs that I had before, because those were both for already live uh, customers. So going back to my roots of implementation has been really fun, and I think I've had a wealth of experience now in all sorts of ways the first gig being where they were merging two instances into one and i was helping keep up the old one the second job where they had been live for something like seven to ten years and were really just trying to maintain and keep up that was really interesting i had an amazing time working with uh, the physicians advisory group on order sets fixing those up changing them using functionality that they hadn't had originally to fix up their order sets and make them work a lot better for providers and now here kind of coming in on almost the ground floor probably a year after the implementation started in full I've had a bunch of experiences that remind me of my time at Epic and across the board it just has given me a lot of different things to to be proud of and also just to feel like I'm a pretty competent uh, Willow inpatient analyst. It's good, and you are, and I'm sure you've hear, heard a lot of people talk about People clap me on the back sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that that is excellent, and uh, I'm sure the person you're referencing um, really appreciates the comments uh, on that. So, three jobs that you've been with so far mm -hmm. uh, for the consulting piece. Can you talk at a high level of how that about. I know you already referenced that LinkedIn is a great tool, but right. how 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 is like some of the logistics there? Like you guys just met, like she. So sometimes she she would actually reach out to me and say, "All right, I have this position through this agency for this hospital." So she was almost she was kind of on her own. She she moved around a bit and worked for multiple different consulting agencies. So she would tell me about a job. I would say, "Okay, um, let's set up you know an interview." And I would, I would talk to the hospital. I, I barely talked to the consulting agency because she was really working for them. She just needed to get me in front of the hospital that wanted to hire me. So I remember she actually got me an interview and I went and you know, you, you walk in and there's the, the Willow head, maybe some Willow analysts. They're there to kind of ask you some questions, see if you know what you're talking about. I think a problem uh, that sometimes arises is resumes aren't always as accurate as people yeah. tell you. I've worked with people who say I have this many years experience, this is what I can do, but then sometimes maybe they don't actually have that. 
But for me, you know, I want to prove myself, and I think my resume does a good job. Clearly, being ex Epic has helped me pretty, pretty well in in my search for jobs as a consultant. But uh, that first interview I went to was the first time I'd ever, you know, really interviewed for a consulting gig, and they just kind of peppered me with questions: How was your experience at Epic? What did you do there? And I actually didn't end up getting that job due to a, a law that said I needed to have three years experience to be a supervisor. They were actually looking for a, a general supervisor for Willow and Beacon and Willow Ambulatory. And I guess there's a federal regulation that says in order to be a supervisor, you need three years experience. I only had two. So, you know, she, I, rem I remember I called her and she, or maybe she called me a day or two later saying, you know, this is what's happening. They can't hire you, but they wanted to hire you. So that gave me a, like this interesting boost, but also <laughs> weird. Am I not gonna be able to find a job because I only worked two years? I thought I had gained enough experience at Epic. I'd been through one and a half implementations, one full, and then when I had, I'd left, I, we were in probably the, the middle of the build phase. So after that, you know, I kept in contact with her and she found me an interview probably a few weeks later and same sort of a thing. I talked to somebody on the phone, showed up for a quick interview uh, at their offices and, you know, I, I haven't uh, been denied or I haven't been turned down for a job that I've interviewed for except for that first one. So I haven't interviewed and and been told, well, you're not qualified enough, or mm -hmm. we don't we don't think we want to go with you. So, as far as that goes, I've found it to be not easy, but having a relationship with one person who is clearly interested in finding new positions that yes. work for you, I think that's the most important thing. You don't want to go in an interview for something that you're not ready for or you're not mm -hmm. qualified for. So I know a lot of people do that on their own. They try and find positions without somebody guiding them. But yeah. So, so would you attribute a lot of like the success of you finding suitable jobs through that recruiter? Yeah, because I wouldn't have known where to look, how to look, who to talk to. Okay. You can look at job boards and they'll they'll list things, and you can certainly just reach out directly there, send the hospital a resume, but. By working with someone who has so many great con connections, not just to consulting agencies, but who has placed people in jobs yep. at those hospitals before, they know that the hospital knows they can trust that person. So if they show up with somebody saying, this this might be a good candidate for your open yeah. position, I think the hospital is more likely to take that as, yeah, this is probably a sure bet. This, this person wouldn't give us this candidate without them being yeah. a, a positive candidate for us. It's very interesting. Yeah. I've never worked with recruiters. So that right, I know some people really are anti-recruiter, anti-agency, <laughs> but I, you know. Very positive uh, outlook. That's great. I, I would just rather have somebody there who's helping me along than, than taking all that responsibility on myself. Okay, and um, going back to this whole looking for a job thing, do you, well, I, I think the answer is very obvious, but I wanna get your take on it, just to confirm what do you think made you very attractive for the very first gig? Being ex epic. Okay. I think I think so. You know, I, I think any time that shows up on a resume and somebody's they're looking for somebody who's experienced, certainly you could hire someone who worked at a hospital mm -hmm. that was live on Epic, but I think a big boost, a big bonus is if you actually have worked at Epic, you're gonna have more experience than, than somebody who's only worked at one hospital perhaps. At Epic, I was involved with, you know, a lot of the, t a lot of the groups in Will Inpatient that worked to improve the, the application itself, let alone the work I did for different hospitals on their implementations. So I think the experience y you gain there is understood throughout the industry to be above and beyond just being an employee at a hospital that has gone live on Epic or has been live. You've worked in the system for mm -hmm. a bit. Okay. That's, I think that's very fair and I would agree with that too. You touched on this a little bit already, but about interviews. What have some of those interview questions been like have they been pretty vague or is this really depends? not so vague they really want to get keyed into 
what kind of issues have you seen and how did you solve them? It can be cliche, like what was a really challenging issue that <laughs> yeah. you overcame and how did you overcome it? Or you know, what is, what is a piece of work that you're particularly proud of? So clearly, you know, having multiple implementations under my belt, I had a couple different stories I could tell about that, how I helped things get across the line, how I, you know, assisted the analysts I was working with when I was in implementation. And more generally, one of the things I talked about in interviews most of all is that I'm, I'm ready to work hard for your company. You know, it's the cliche things that you say in, in work interviews, but specific to Epic. I don't, like this question has always been funny to me because all I'm doing is going in, being myself, being approachable, being, I'm gonna give you honest answers about what I've done. And I think people appreciate that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Sometimes people would just, you know, think too much into it and yeah. come out not themselves, if that makes sense. So it's right. always nice to get affirmation from these kind of videos. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, um, If you're willing to share, what, what type of compensation have you seen? Like the diversity, like yeah. the lowest to some of the highest? I would say... And not just yourself, uh, yeah. colleagues and such. I'm aware of people who get paid more than I do. I think that has a lot to do with how are they, you know, are they on their own? Are they working through a consulting agency? Are they a pharmacist? Typically pharmacists are paid more as consultants than somebody who's a non-pharmacist. but. Yeah, I think a good example is is my second job. You know, I say I, I've been doing consulting, which I would say is true because it's short-term gigs for the most part. But on my second one, they hired me as a consultant to full-time. So I was paid a more consulting range of, of salary. And then after three months, I was knocked down to more of a full-time. So compensation-wise, I have ranged from about probably $40 an hour up to $100 an hour. So there is quite a bit of range for me. I know that it can go up to as much as $200, $300 an hour. Mm -hmm. I would, my eyes would, you know, bulge out and my brain would explode <laughs> if I ever were, were offered a job at that level. But clearly it's, it's well paying enough that I'm not too worried about what cut the consulting agency takes. I'm not too worried about demanding more. And with consulting gigs like the one I'm on now, you don't get any vacation time. So they're paying you for that as well. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I'm making more than I ever thought I would be in any point in, in my career, whatever it may have been. So to be nitpicky about where I'm at doesn't, doesn't match my personality. I'm, I'm pretty low key when it comes to that, but obviously glad to be in a, a career and on a path where I'm doing well for myself, just bought a house, Nice. life is pretty good. There are probably a lot of individuals out there that would love to be in your shoes. They might, yeah. So if there was like one <laughs> high level tip, advice you can give them, one thing, one key nugget, what, what would that be? Something short. I'm not sure Epic would like me to say this, but go work at Epic and then find yourself after that. There's a lot of people who, who get into this by being at a hospital where Epic is, is live, working in that job for a while and saying, well, now I'd like to move into informatics. I saw that every place I've been. There were pharmacists, farm techs who moved from, from a, a role as an actual pharmacist into the informatics team. but. From where I'm standing, my experience at Epic is the reason why I'm, I'm now where I'm at. So you can learn a lot, you can, you can certainly gain a lot of experience, and they don't expect the majority of their employees to stay for, for many years, although some do. I mean, the, the, the Epic team on the Willow Inpatient team here, I pretty much know, you know, 33% of them third of, of the Epic uh, staff who are on the Willow Inpatient team here I met and worked with while I was at Epic. I guess my tip would be, as I've already kind of stated in my answers, go work at Epic for a bit. That's, that's the way you're going to learn the most. You're going to be able to, to have 
literally thousands of people around you who are working on, on epic projects. You're gonna learn a ton. And by the time you're ready to leave, if you wanna go into consulting, I think there are going to be positions in the consulting world for epic projects for a long time to come. Awesome. Well, that's all the time we have. And uh, thank you to Jordan. Thanks, Brian. For um, spending a lot of time actually answering very honest answers. Thank you. Thanks again. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and watching the video. If you like the content, definitely hit the Impro RX button over to your left to subscribe and definitely check out more videos over here uh, to your right. Now, as always, if you have questions, comments, and even better, suggestions for future videos, definitely let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, until next time, guys.